ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فالذين امنوا به وازروه ونصروه واتبعوا النور الذي انزل معه اولئك هم المفلحون صدق الله العظيم my respected brothers and sisters today i'm going to talk to you about a subject fida ka abi wa ummi my mother my father everything is you know i'm willing to sacrifice on you prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the love of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the aya i have read in front of you from surah araf in which allah subhanahu wa taala is commanding us that after having faith and iman on allah and the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is our responsibility to honor him and support him and follow the nur the light that he has come with the message he has come with that means quran my brothers and my sisters in surah ali imran allah subhanahu wa taala says kul in kuntum tuhibbun allah fattabi'uni yuhibbukum allah if you want allah to love you then follow me means prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah will love you and why why yaghfir lakum zunubakum and he is going to forgive your sins wallahu ghafurur rahim brothers and sisters love of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the requirement of our faith and love of the prophet above everything more than our self more than our family more than our parents more than anything around us is the requirement as it comes in the hadith in which umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu says at one point ya rasulullah i love you more than everything but my nafs and the prophet said your iman will not be complete umar until and unless you love me more than even your nafs and umar immediately says ya rasulullah i love you more than my nafs as well my brothers and my sisters love of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam connects us with our deen you know when you love somebody then you are going to follow that person this is a human psyche this is a human psychology that more you love somebody more you are going to follow that person that person that system that mission my brothers and my sisters ibn qayyim rahmatullah alayhi says this is mandatory for every muslim to study the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is it's not optional it's mandatory because if when you will know more about the prophet his life his sacrifices his struggle his mission then more you are going to follow and love him my brothers that's what ibn qayyim is mentioning there and dr motram naim siddiqi sahab has written one book called rasul sunnat e rasul in which he has says two things number 1 he says that sunnat is a permanent institution of our faith you know there are a lot of people these days they are trying to take away the personality the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the hadith sunna from this equation our equation is belief in allah subhanahu wa taala belief in prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam belief in akhira and all you know rest of the belief but they want to take away this from this equation out the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they say you know we, his his job was to deliver the message and that message is good enough to guide itself and quran is good enough naim siddiq sahab says another beautiful thing he says you know sunna and hadith is like a guard over ayahs of quran and these people 
they want to remove this guard so they can access ayahs of Quran to give the meaning of to give meaning to the ayahs of Quran according to their own understanding to manipulate the meanings of the ayahs of Quran my brothers and my sisters there is there are two terms used one is ittiba and one is itaat you know itaat is that whatever you are commanded recommended to do you do that ittiba comes from love that when you love somebody it's not necessary that he or she has recommended you that but you want to adopt it you want to follow it you want to go extra mile you know this is called ittiba for prophet muhammad sallam we need not just the itaat we need more of ittiba that we want to adopt we want to imitate you know everything we have come to know about his life about his actions about his mission about his teachings my, my brothers and my sisters you know love actually paves the path towards ittiba and itaat so when you love somebody it paves it facilitates your journey towards the love towards the itaat towards the ittiba of that person our love to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi should be of such a degree our commitment to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam should be such our conviction to the mission of him should be such as it is said very truly by one of the scholar he said somebody asked him do you believe in god and my reply was you know i don't know the science i don't know all these formulas i don't know all these equations but i know one thing that 7.7.5 billion people of this world could be wrong including my parents my family my children my wife but on the other hand prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will never be wrong the love like one of the sahabi says my own eyes can deceive me but the tongue of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam never waves nazar never utters anything which is not right that conviction that commitment that level of trust comes with the true and utmost love with somebody and that is the love required from us for prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam brothers and sisters always remember the best book of seera is quran and best tafsir of quran is life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know why people say the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the most influential person humanity has ever seen the reason is that even after 1400 years as michael hart has said you know in one of the seminars in london that after 1400 years if you find any muslim he will be willing to give his life for prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what else do you need such a influence no no personality in human history has influenced people so much is there anybody who can michael hart is asking people question in the, in the same seminar do you know anybody who is willing to sacrifice for jesus and moses and peace be upon all of them and the seminar people say no he said but if you have any muslim sitting here ask them and their reply will be yes and what is the reason why prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the most influential person he has changed the society of arabs in 23 years which is a very short time in the life span of any nation people who were bankrupt from all dimensions and they became the leader of the humanity they became the leader over all these superpowers roman and persian and this arab these arabs they were very insignificant unnoticeable on this planet on earth on the map but they became the most prominent within 23 years my brothers and my sisters you know when we want to love somebody we want to know the qualities of that person 
and look at the qualities of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was a personality, complete human being from all aspects. He was sincere. He was practicing. He was he has emotional intelligence so he, he he knew you know the condition of the heart of the pupil the emotional condition of pupil and he was advising them according to their emotions and condition emotional intelligence he understand the human psychology the one who has knowledge of unseen the one who has the information about the previous nations so he can guide us through from the darkness of this dunya there are many dimensions of the life of prophet muhammad the complete personality to guide the humanity you will not find all these dimensions in any one personality you may find one part of something in one personality or part of something in other but having all these dimensions look at his life when he was living in makkah before he declared you know his prophethood and he was best among them Sadiq and Amin and if you see that uh, treaty of Hilful Fudul the treaty he developed between all the all the communities living in Makkah how they should go and move forward as one unit and you see his role in Sheba Bi Talib his role when in Taif people have tortured him but still he is praying for them Look at his role in Quba. Look at his role in Masjid al Nabi. Look at his role as a commander in chief in, in Badr and Ahad and Battle of Trench. Look at his role when he is entering Makkah as a victorious man. And the same people who have expelled him out of the city, who have done all the atrocities against him, tortured him. But he was making dua for them. He is entering Makkah with full humbleness. My brothers, uh, th these are all dimensions we should know so that we can develop more love of Prophet Muhammad So the dimensions are emotional attachment with Prophet imitating his actions, adopting his physical appearance and loving the mission of the Prophet Muhammad you know this is the need of the hour for us especially living in the West that where we don't see you know respect for anybody you know I'm saying this with soft words and then you can figure it out I don't want to be harsh on this topic but wallahi if you see around there is no adab there is no etiquette there is no respect for teacher for parents for religious icons you will make fun of religious icons so in society and time we are living in there is no respect so we have to pass on this legacy to our kids to how to respect Quran Imam Ghazali has written the whole chapter on this subject that Quran is a book first you should learn how to respect this book this is not something like just another book that you can open and and you are with wudu or not or you are laying or you are sitting that's what we see with our kids today. So we should teach our kids this basic etiquette. We should adopt, we should practice so they can see that how we respect Quran and how we do, how, how we give respect to Prophet Muhammad how we do adab of Quran. And that's why it is very important, my brothers. Imam Shafi's mother, when she sent him to Imam Malik for learning a hadith of Prophet Sallallahu the first thing she advised to Imam Shafi is that go and learn adab because once you will learn adab then you will be able to learn the ahadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam my brothers and my sisters we see the role model of Imam Malik whenever he used to narrate any hadith he will do some preparation will have you know new clothes will put, put some perfume and then he will sit down with full adab and then he will narrate the hadith of the Prophet same practice from Imam Bukhari my brothers and my sisters and there was a Sahabi Hazrat Sahil bin uh, Sa'ad he went in one community and he was doing teaching halaqa of hadith and he saw people are talking to each other he left 
and told the pupil that seems like you have no thirst. This is a disrespect when the, when the teachings of Nabi is going on or when there is a Quran halqa going on, it's disrespect that we talk. And this is one of the interpretation of that ayah of Quran in which in Surah Al-Hujrat in which it is recommended, it is commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep your voice lower than the voice of Allah and the Nabi. When Allah's and Allah's messengers verdict come about something, we are not supposed to give our opinion on top of that. That is another interpretation of that hadith, my brothers and my sisters. You know, we need to pass this legacy to our kids. Salim bin Abdullah bin Umar, son of Abdullah bin Umar, and you know Abdullah bin Umar, Allah, no? son of Umar, Allah, no? Salim, whenever he used to travel from Medina to Makkah, he used to stop at every station when he had, where he had seen his father stopping and praying and making ablution because he knows that my father had stopped on a station where, where he had seen Prophet Muhammad stopping. And there is a famous story that one time Abdullah bin Umar traveled with Prophet from Medina to Makkah and after the departure of Prophet Muhammad when Abdullah bin Umar traveled to Makkah from Medina, he stopped at every station where he had seen Prophet Muhammad stopping. And he was making ablution wherever he has seen Prophet Muhammad making ablution. And he will sit down the way he was sitting to make ablution. To the extent Prophet when he was passing through this way there was a tree and Prophet has to lower his head down to pass under the tree when Abdullah bin Umar was passing through that passage there was no more tree but he still lowered his head in the following of Prophet Muhammad and people asked why you do this he said I have seen my Mahboob doing this so I'm going to imitate imitate every action of him that's why people used to gather when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam go for haircut people will gather around that shop so no hair goes down when he will make wudu people will try to grab the water and that's why one of the mushrikeen when he came to Mac Medina and he saw all this and he went back and he said the respect I have seen the love I have seen in the companions of Prophet I have traveled and I have seen Qaisar and I have seen Persian kings and I have seen other kings. Wallahi, I have not seen such a respect, such a love, but I have seen for the companion, in the companions for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my brothers and my sisters. You know, when you want to know more about someone, then you want to know how, how the people around them, the immediate connection, the people who are more close to them, what is their testimony about them? And Wallahi for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when people who were more close to him, they were more in love with him. Hazrat Khadija Radiallahu his wife, she was the first one to declare Shahada, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Hazrat Abu Bakr, who was his friend from very early age, he was the first one to say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Zaid bin Haritha, who was slave of Khadija Ta'ala and ha, even before prophethood, he was the first one saying, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. My brothers and my sisters, these were the witnesses. Anas bin Malik, he was serving you for a long time. And I will say, Rabbi ibn Kaab Aslami, Ta'ala no who used to bring water for you to make wudu in Medina when you, were, you will get up for tahajjud he will wait for you at the doorstep and one day you asked him that uh, Rabbi ask today anything you want he did not ask for castle or you know wealth or status or position he asked only one thing such a close person to Prophet he said I want your company in Jannah Ya Rasulullah and Prophet said, then help me with more sujood so that you could be with me in Jannah. My brothers and my sisters, for emotional love, we see some other examples. For example, I'll share with you just part of the story of 
حضرت ایوب انصاری رضی اللہ تعالیٰ نو وین پروفٹ مائگریٹڈ ٹو مدینہ دا فرسٹ ہاؤس ہی اسٹیٹ واز دا ہاؤس آف ایوب انصاری رضی اللہ تعالیٰ نو اینڈ اٹ واز ٹو فلور تو انیشیلی پروفٹ لیفٹ آن دا ٹاپ اینڈ دا ایوب انصاری واز آن دا گراؤنڈ فلور بٹ یو نو واٹ بیکاز آف دا انکنوینئنس آف دا فیملی پروفٹ آس ایوب انصاری دیر وائی ڈونٹ وی موو ٹو دا گراؤنڈ اینڈ یو گو اپ اینڈ حضرت ایوب انصاری آؤٹ آف رسپیکٹ آؤٹ آف ادب آؤٹ آف لو ہی سی رسول یا رسول اللہ ہاؤ از اٹ پاسبل دیٹ وی ول لیو آن ٹاپ اینڈ یو آر لیونگ انڈر از ناٹ پاسبل فار اس ٹو لیو ابو یو پروفٹ انسسٹڈ نریشنس دیکھ کے سے دے وینٹ اپ بٹ ایٹ نائٹ ٹائم بوتھ وائف اینڈ ہسبینڈ دے ول اسپینڈ آل نائٹ سٹنگ ان دا کارنر آف دیئر روم سو دے ڈونٹ وانٹ ٹو واک on top of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam these were the closest people to him and abdullah bin salam who was a jew scholar who became muslim abu huraira razi allah ta'ala anhu narrates that one time after departure of the prophet sallam he visited madina and abdullah salam abdullah bin salam came to him he said come with me my home and i let you let you drink from the bowl from which prophet sallam drink and i will let you pray on a rug on which prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so they were trying to save every you know every memory they could of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam hazrat umar razi allah taala no at one point say you know i went to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and i asked him ya rasulullah give me permission for umrah and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave me permission and said oh my younger brother don't forget to remember me in your duas حضرت عمر سیز واللہ دا ہیپینیس آئی گاڈ فرام دس سینٹینس آف پروفٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آئی کین ناٹ گیٹ دیٹ ہیپینیس ایون دا ہول ورلڈ یو نو نیما ٹریجر کم ٹو می آئی ول ناٹ بی دیٹ ہیپی ایز آئی گاڈ ہیپی فرام دس ون سینٹینس او مائی ینگر برادر ڈونٹ فار گیٹ ٹو ریممبر اس ان یور دواز مائی برادرس اینڈ مائی سسٹرس I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us this tawfiq that we can develop this love. And you know, a lot of time we complain, you know, what we have to, we have to sacrifice this, that. Look at the companions. You know, this example I'm going to share with you of Hazrat Asma bint Abi Bakar, razi Allah ta'ala, no, daughter of Abu Bakar, when Prophet was migrating from Makkah to Medina and he was in Ghari Sor, Mountain of Sor, The job of Asma was to, to deliver the food. You know how far is Ghari Sor if you have a straight road is 4 km. And in those days it might be more. So I'll say 4 to 6 km and she was pregnant. And she was in the last month of her pregnancy, my brothers and my sisters. And you know how tall is mountain Sor, how high it is. 4610 feet last month of pregnancy weak woman and ask any woman how difficult it is to walk and do anything in the last month of pregnancy and she was doing it because she has the love she was caring she has this devotion this conviction this commitment with prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam my brothers and my sisters You know, there are two more icons we see about whom Prophet Sallallahu has said the house of Talha and house of Zubair will be next to my house in Jannah. He has said for other people but these are specifically mentioned Talha and Zubair and the reason was these are the two Sahaba they took out their sword to protect Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi And I'll share with you the example of Zubair Razi Allah Ta'ala no, in Makkah where you are not supposed to take out your sword. He heard that somebody has insulted Prophet Sallallahu He rushed and ran towards Prophet and asked him who has insulted you and his sword was in his hand. And Prophet smiled and what are you going to do Zubair? I'm going to hit him with this sword. And Prophet, look at Zubair, young man in Makkah. And same thing was Hazrat Talha Razi Allah Ta'ala know that he protected Prophet in the battle of Ahad. And I'm going to share with you one example of the sacrifice of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that we can really 
understand that how much he has done for us how many hardships he has gone through for for us as a ummah to deliver this message for us and we in air conditioned room sitting in a couch air conditioned masajid luxurious life so we are not that much appreciative of that until unless we know and this example you know amazed me and i was really so i was feeling so you know i was feeling the pain that prophet had to go through that day when he was coming back from taif and when he reached to the border of makkah and taif was the hardest day of his life according to him and he cannot enter in makkah because abu lahab his uncle is the chief of the tribe and he has revoked his membership of that tribe the nationality of the tribe he cannot so he has no protection he cannot enter in makkah now he is sending zaid bin harisa to all these tribe leader he sent some first one to suhail bin amr but suhail bin amr he refused then prophet sallam sends to umayya bin khalaf he refuses nine attempts failed nine tribe leader said no tenth one mutim bin adi he agreed that i will give you protection and wherever you are wait and i'll come and take you and then he brings in parsalam in kaaba and announces but imagine the pain prophet of allah the most beloved to allah subhanahu wa taala that he has to go through all this pain and suffering my brothers and my sister that he is sending a message and they are rejecting my brothers and my sisters there is another dimension of loving prophet sallallahu and this is really the real true dimension that we should try to do our best hajjatul wida there were 120000 sahaba present and you know in jannatul baqi in madina how many sahaba are buried more or less 10000 so where did rest of 110000 gone they all went out of madina even though they loved madina they loved to get buried there but they wanted to sacrifice this love for the love of the mission of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so they all went in different different directions of the world to spread the word of islam and because of that we see that how islam flourished all around the world my brothers and my sisters and i'll just give you one example of hazrat ayub ansari again more than 80 year old because he heard this hadith from prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he said whoever will struggle and fight to win the battle of qustantunia present day istanbul he will have a special status and prophet made a special dua for those people and he wanted to be part of that caravan that mission and when they reached there close to that place he asked his companions you know if i get martyred or if i die take my body as close as possible to that city to bury me my brother this was the emotion they had attached with the guidance the teaching the commands of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam now i'm going to talk to you just couple of minutes about the durood on prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we all you know recite this aya inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna alan nabi ya ayyuhal ladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima that allah and his messenger sends durood on prophet and you muslim also should send durood and salam on the prophet and let me share you with you this hadith qudsi in which prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that allah says that whenever somebody send durood on you Allah sends 10 mercy on that person then Allah forgives 10 sins of that person then Allah raises 10 ranks of this person it's not just finished yet and the angel jibril and other angels also do the same for that person and there is a special angel who transfers who transmits who conveys the salam of that person to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam after he has departed from this dunya my brothers and my sisters and then there are blessings 
and I'm going to say one more blessing here. Mawlana Maududi Rahmatullah said that when in Durood you say Ali Muhammad, Ali Muhammad means we all are included in that dua as a Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi because in Quran, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used the word Ali, Ali Fir'aun, Ali Samud, Ali Ad, so that means the whole Ummah of Fir'aun, all the people who have supported Fir'aun, all the people who were with Fir'aun, all the people who were following his mission, they all were included. So, wallahi, what a beautiful point. When we say Ali Muhammad, every person of his ummah who is following his mission and who loves the mission of the prophet Muhammad and who says kalma la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah he is part of ali muhammad so when we send durood actually we are also sending supplication dua for ourselves and for the whole ummah you know in addition to sending dua and salam to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam my brothers, I will conclude with one last point. Imagine if Prophet Muhammad is among us today. Do you think he will be happy when all this injustice is going around in this world? People are suffering everywhere. You go and see the people of Syria. You go and see the people of Palestine. You see the people of Kashmir. You see the people of Burma. You see the people in our own countries, like in America. There are so many millions of people, they go to their bed without having a proper meal. There are so many people, they are suffering even in our country because of the injustice of the system. So do you think Prophet ﷺ was happy us praying, you know, tahajjud, praying our salah, doing our zikr, enjoying our life you know doing tarawi and he will be happy with us imagine this is impossible if he will be among us today you know this tarawi this tahajjud this salah this quran this zikr should motivate us to follow the mission of the prophet muhammad sallallahu and his mission was that every injustice happens we should be the bearer of the flag of justice we should be the people raising our voice we should be the first people raising our voice my brothers as it is said by one of the scholar every ruh and spirit departs from this dunya because of the injustice because they have not received this message of Quran they all call the Muslim Ummah they where is the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu that they have not reached out to us to provide us the justice to stand with us you know to give us the shoulder to say some words of you know you know uh, some words of comfort to us not necessary that we can solve everybody's problem but we can give our shoulder we can say some kind words and we have to reach out to every soul my brothers with this message of quran you know i will close and i have given this example before but I'm going to repeat the Anas bin Malik has narrated when that Jew child who used to serve Prophet Muhammad his death time came and Prophet got this news he rushed to the house of that Jew child and Anas bin Malik says that it was difficult for us to catch up with Prophet and to catch our breath because he was rushing so hard so fast and you know why he was rushing? That young boy was not his taxpayer. He was not his voter. He was not his po a potential soldier either. So why he was rushing to save that young child? And Anas bin Malik says, Rizal no, after Prophet entered in his house and Prophet asked the young child to say Kalma la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and the child looked at his father and the father said, follow what Abul Qasim is saying. And when the child read this kalma, said this kalma, and he passed away, when Prophet came out, he was so relieved. And on his face, you can see the happiness. He was happy 
because he was able to save one more soul from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sister, this is our mission. This is our responsibility. This is the true love with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives you and me tawfiq that we really develop this true love to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I will share with you uh, some poetry in Urdu in which it says, Mere qalb ko bhi naseeb ho, teri zaat se wohi nisbatein. وہ جو عظمتیں تھیں عویس کی وہ جو رابطے تھے بلال کے جو نبی کو میرے قبول ہوں وہی کاش میرے اصول ہوں وہی صبر ہو وہی گفتگو وہی سادگی وہی آجزی آخر دعوانہ الحمدللہ رب العالمین السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ